Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Give my hand as you are seated. Glory to God. I went back and noticed on Mother's Day, we had communion. We're not doing the communion today. We'll do that on the 30th. And, um, uh, you know, we stayed a little later on Mother's Day, like quarter after, almost 20 after. And, but you got a good flower, mothers. And uh, so, uh, you know, Mother's Day, people go out for dinner or do things. But on Father's Day, as one person told me, it's like, what's dad grilling on the grill, you know? So mothers get to sit back. Dads usually have to grill their own food. But thanks be unto God, we get to enjoy this and celebrate it together. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to share a thought today. I just want to call it because it is Father's Day. I appreciate uh, how uh, Miss Angel approached Mother's Day and, and shared from her heart. And I think it's very good. Uh, when that happens, but a home that reflects the father. Now, someone that reflects, re re reflects the father, we know it's the natural father, but the natural father ought to be reflecting the heavenly father, and then the whole home ought to have that reflection of the heavenly father. Amen. Joe, uh, Pope John Paul, one of the popes is the 23rd one. He said, it's easier for a father to have children than for children to have a real father. And uh, so it's, it doesn't take a lot of work. We all know how it happens. But uh, it's easier uh, for a father to have children than some children to have a real father. Uh, I've, I read this. I thought it was kind of uh, funny. Uh, you know, the older I get, this is not really a dad joke. But the older I get, the more I like dad jokes. The more I embarrass my kids, you know, the more I embarrass them. And uh, sometimes, sometimes the corner they are, the better I like them. I don't know. It's just something about it that I just like. I don't know. It, it just comes with, I don't know. I don't know. Not everybody may, may be that way. You know, you know, it's like one guy said, my good friends poured glue on my weapons. Though he denies it, I'm sticking to my guns. You know, I like fun things such as that. Things like, what did Tennessee, the same that Arkansas? You know, stupid stuff, and I just think they're fun. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, but here's one that really makes sense. Here's one that really makes sense. A little girl was sitting with her grandfather, was, was sitting with her grandfather, she was sitting on his lap as he read her a story. From time to time, she would take her eyes off the book and reach up and touch his wrinkled cheeks. By and by, she was alternating strokes from her cheeks to his cheeks. Finally, she spoke. Grandpa, did God make you? Yes, sweetheart, he answered. God made me a long time ago. She said, then grandpa, did God make me too? He said, yes, indeed, honey. He answered her. God made you just a little while ago. Just a little while ago. Oh, she said, feeling their perspective faces again. She observed, God's getting a whole lot better, isn't he? Come on. If he made you a long time ago and me just a little while ago, he's getting a whole lot better. <laughs> little Susan was mother's helper. This is not just a Mother's Day thing. This will get into a, a father's one for the grandfathers there. Uh, little Susan was mother's helper. She helped set the table when guests were due for dinner. Presently, everything was set. The guests came in, and everyone sat down. Then mother noticed something was missing. Susan, she said, you didn't put a knife and fork at Mr. Smith's place. Susan said, I thought he wouldn't need them. Daddy says he always eats like a horse anyway. <laughs> it's 
So fathers, you have to watch what you say because kids don't always connect the dots. Amen. So anyway, so, you know, there's a lot of things that transpires, but thank God, you know, we have it. I've said this at Mother's Day, and I'll say it again on Father's Day, and that is, you know, I, I, I have a lot of respect and regard for single parents, even on the father's side, because some fathers end up raising children, some mothers do. A father that does it, he can still be a father, but he can't be a mother. And a mother can raise them that can be a mother, but it's hard for them to be a father. And so I thank God for everyone that's had to do that and the struggles that's in there. Or, or be in a home to where one is the spiritual leader and the other one isn't. May God continue to show himself alive in every home. Amen. May him show himself alive in every home and the things that that we're doing. Uh, you know, years ago I went back and I saw something. Uh, Angel had a lot of children. Josh was a little guy and she had fathers bring pictures of their sons and she had a video of it. And, uh, I preached a message that day and it reflected a song that says, I want to be just like you. The truth is a lot of children are just like their parents in a lot of ways. You know, there's times when I've called, I've called Angel and I thought Maddie answered the phone. And there's times I've called Maddie and I thought Angel answered the phone. And I, she said, because both of them say, hey. <laughs> and when I called, I look at the phone making sure I got the right one. You know, there's a lot, lot of times that there's similarities in how people's voices are and how people's uh, actions are. Now, I've never noticed Josh's voice sounding like mine or uh, or whatever. I told him the other day, I told, I've told all of them, you better thank God you took after your mother. Uh, you, you'll, you'll be able to make it f- further in life. Amen. As far as your looks anyway. Uh, but anyway, so we all reflect the father. And the more we reflect God, the more our children will reflect us. But I don't want my children to be like me just because I'm a dad. I want them to be able to respond to God. I want to respond to the love of God. You know, it doesn't matter where it's at. I want my family to walk with God. Amen. You know, one of the most famous verses in the Bible for families is the one in Joshua. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. We will serve the Lord. We were at a, uh, a convenience store. Matter of fact, it was at a Bucky's coming back. And they had a twist on us for me in my house. Instead of saying we would serve the Lord, it was talking about we will serve a certain liquor or something. And I'm thinking, you know, some people uh, just, just try to take what's right and to twist it. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord in, in this. So won't you turn with me to Psalm 25 this morning? Yeah. Psalm 25. I've read this before. And I just want to read again because I think it's something that reflects what I want to say. If a home is to reflect God, then you have to look at who is God. What is God's attributes? Number one, he is holy. That's what I love about that song. He is holy. He is righteous. He is love. And he is true. He is holy, he's righteous, he's love, and he's true. You know, I mentioned this not long ago, even I think Wednesday, that being truthful is the only way there is. Uh, I, I think some people have taught their children on how to say white lies. Because... You know, there's this concept with some people that, you know, it wasn't really a lie, it was a little white lie. But once we start teaching people untruths, teaching children untruths, these things will be built in them and they will follow that pattern. 
You know, it's all right to lie if you are protecting someone. It's all right to do this if you're doing that. There's nothing all right about being deceptive. There's nothing right about, about being contrary to what the Bible says or how the law of God works. There's nothing good about it. And I realize not none of us are perfect. We're all growing and developing in God. But I think that if God's attributes is holy, righteous, love, and true, then if we're going to reflect that in our life and reflect it in our homes, then we ought to have things that are holy, things that are righteous, things that are love, things that are true. You know, I hear more people talking about it now than before, but we have a policy. We've had it in our house and still do. And that is we do not go to bed mad. We do not leave mad. We do not go to bed angry. We don't let the sun go down upon our wrath. It doesn't matter how long it takes. We are going to work it through. I have dealt with people, even pre-pastoring and since I've been pastoring, that has gotten into arguments with loved ones. There was a tragic accident, and they have never been able to get through it. All they can think about is that last conversation. Let me tell you, there's reasons why the Bible gives us instructions. Because life is life. And life will not play fair. This is not a game that you buy off the shelves at Walmart called life. Life is real. And the enemy is not playing games in the lives of families. He's out to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus Christ came that we may have life and life more abundantly. Amen. So there are things that we want. A lot of people want certain things, but they're not willing to really pay the price for it. I heard some people saying one time when a certain Cadillac came out, I'd love to have that Cadillac. I'd love to have that. Eventually I told one of them, you can. Oh no, I can't. There's no way. I said, you can. There's no way I can. I said, you can. Well, how can I? You just got to be willing to pay the price that they paid for it. See, people want something, but they're not always willing to pay the price to get it. Because everything can be given free. Come on. Everything is discounted. If it's not discounted, I don't want it. You know, I came a long time ago. I thank God. The older I get, it's more it's happening. Where people want to bless me as a pastor. But, you know, I remember the times that I was working full time and, and I know what it was and, and still preaching every weekend and so forth and so on. And there's times I've told people, I'm not just looking for a preacher's discount because it's people that's paid the full price that helps us get where we're at, amen? And so often we have this discounted mentality that it carries over into our lives spiritually, that we're not willing to pay the full price. But whoever's willing to pay the price gets the reward. Who's ever willing to pay the price gets the reward. Salvation is free. It didn't cost us anything. But, you know, I've, I've seen people say, I like to have, I like to walk where that person walks. I like to have the kind of faith they have. I like to have the kind of family they have. I like to have the kind of relationship with their wife or their spouse that they have. We all can have whatever we desire if we're willing to pay the price to get it. Can I get a better amen? I've got a few head nods, but I like to hear an amen. 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 So whatever it's available, whatever is out there is available to us. You just got to be willing to do it. Amen. So there's some things here in Psalms 25 that I enjoy. Verse 1, it says, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. Verse four, show me your ways, O Lord. Now, if you underline and write in your Bibles, I want you to get these three points. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truths. And teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all the day. So I've used these before. Show me, teach me, lead me, or show me, teach me, and guide me. So this is the life of, of the Father. Uh, the psalmist said, show me your ways. Teach me, lead me. 
And I think as a father in a home, I love these three concepts because I'm still asking the Lord. I have made this one of my favorite songs. Show me, teach me, lead me, show me, teach me, guide me. That's the heart that we should have towards God every day. Show me your ways, oh God. No matter how much you pray, no matter how much you read the Bible, you'll never learn all the ways of God at one time. That's why it's a journey with God. It's a walk with God. I know more about God today than I did 40 years ago. I know more about God today than I did five years ago. Why? Because God continually to show himself alive through many infallible proofs. Show me, teach me, and guide me. And how can I show others and teach others and guide others if I don't have a heart towards God? Show me, teach me. And guide me. You know, that's not just for men. This is for all people. This is for mothers. This is for fathers. This is for grandfathers. This is for grandmothers. This is for uncles. This is for aunts. This is for nieces and nephews. Because somebody always looks to somebody for some kind of guidance. Come on. How many times have we told kids, stay away from that person? That, 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 run around with them is not going to gonna help you. Oh, there's nothing wrong with running around with that person. Uh, just trust me. Just trust me. I realize teenagers know more than we do. <laughs> you know, one guy said they ought to take every male child, put him in a whiskey barrel, empty, I'd say. <laughs> that's got that little whole cork, you know, on the side of it. Put him in there, put the top on it, and just open it up and feed him until he gets about 25 and then he ought to be safe enough to release in the earth. I don't know. I pray and thank God that's not the case. Amen. But the truth is, everyone is looking for someone to speak into their life. I've told more than one person, Josh or Maddie or Brittany, they, they really look to you. They really look to you. So may you continue to live right so they'll have a pattern to follow. Amen. They really look to you. And now it's even more so with grandchildren. Come on. Don't do that in front of my grandkids. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't do that. Because kids are kids. It's like my dad says you eat like a horse. So apparently I don't need to put a fork and knife at your plate. Come on. It's like that boy came up to the preacher after service and handed him his dollar. He said, he said, Pastor, I want to give you this dollar. It's the only dollar I have. Well, thank you, son, but I don't need your dollar. Yes, you do. My dad, I've heard my dad say more than once, you're the poorest preacher he's ever heard. <laughs> now, come on. <laughs> come on. Kids, pick up things. Oh, they don't get it. They do get it. They just can't connect the right dots to say it. They got good ears. Except for, come here, I need you. Outside of that, they got good ears. I heard mom and dad say something. When? When I was accidentally on purpose, listening at the door. Accidentally on purpose, listening at the door. Yes. But we have the heart, show me your ways. Teach me your paths. Come on, lead me. It ought to be something that we all have. A show me, teach me, lead me heart. Every day you can get up and say, Father, show me your ways. There's a way that seemeth right unto mankind, but the end thereof is destruction. So if the ways of man leads to death and destruction, we know the ways of God leads to life. The ways of God leads to life. Teach me your ways. You know, how many times have you heard to say, that person acts just like their father? Or if it's a bad way, that one, if you don't watch, you're going to end up just like your dad. Or you're going to end up just like your mother. Sometimes it's a positive and sometimes it's a negative. Why? Because whatever you associate yourself to, things are imparted in your life. Impartation is not just 
good spiritual stuff. Impartation is impartation. And you can impart things to people. You know this thing about mentoring and and uh, not all mentoring is healthy mentoring. Come on. Not all mentoring is healthy mentoring. So if you want someone to speak into your life or your kid's life or whatever, then you want somebody that has a heart that goes to God, says, show me, teach me, lead me. If God is showing you his ways, teaching you his presets and concepts, and leading you into his righteousness, then you become a safe person to follow. You become a safe person to follow. That's why Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. You know, people say, well, you never follow man. You only follow God. Even Paul said, you can follow me as I follow Christ. But as soon as you see somebody taking the wrong path, then you have to decide that I may still love and respect, but I'm not going to continue to walk down that same path. I, I rejoice with the sobriety of the testimonies today. I, I, I do rejoice with it. You know, I've had, I've had some personal friends, personal friends. One of them at age 47, I went to Louisiana and did a funeral for that went to Bible college with me. We walked together, preached together. And um, uh, somewhere he got this concept that alcohol would never hurt him. And at age 47, he died because his liver was completely gone. He could not filter anything out of his body. And one of the dearest, closest friends, I went and stood and helped the funeral. Another person that I was very close to, uh, you know, got with a group of people that says, there's nothing wrong with it. This got this and, and tried to get it in all of his heart. Uh, he said he knew it wasn't right, but whoever has this, listen to me, whoever has this, has this right in the palm of their hand. So whoever has your ear, we end up with your heart in the palm of their hand. So that's why you have to guard your heart with all diligence. You have to guard your heart with all diligence. And that's what it is. So this show me, this teach me, guide me, show me your ways, teach me. So to get this, according to Matthew chapter 6, a home that pleases God is a home that must seek first the kingdom of God. A home that seeks first the kingdom of God. You know, even if one doesn't have what they call, all right, set in a circle, we're having scripture devotions. Some kids can endure that. But I'm not talking about just having your little designated devotional time and nothing else. I'm talking about we teach in everything we do. According to the book of De Deuteronomy, it says we taught our children as we go and we taught them as we come. We taught them as we rise up. We taught them as we're setting down. The things of God are taught and we pray that they end up being caught in our spirit. So it's not just given a scripture and a verse. It's like, you know, when we're do doing this, watching TV. Now, you know that's not right. You know this is not here. This is how we believe. This is what we do. So it's not just a set aside at 7 a.m. every morning devotion time. We're devoted to God. See, the word devotion comes out of the word devoted or the word devoted comes out of it. And so devotion is not just a book. Devotion is from the heart. I'm fully devoted to God. So when I spend time with God, I'm, I'm devoted to him. I have my devotion. I'm, I'm spending time. If I'm riding in the car, if I'm standing in line at Walmart trying to keep my joy, you know, <laughs> or at the, the drive-thru at McDonald's, you know, there's a couple things that I don't like. There's more than a couple. I don't like to pay at a pump for fuel. You'd have to walk in to get the receipt. So you woke up. 
Kyle, of all the stuff I said, I finally said something. (laughs) So it's not the preaching, it's the frustration that stirs you. Because I'm a receipt guy. The reason I pay here is so I don't have to go in there. That's right. And another thing I don't like is fast food that tell you, please pull up. After they have your money. I was down here at Eaton just this past week. I had one of those cars from National Trail. You know, buy a Big Mac, get one free. Sound good to me. I dismantle both of them and make one. And uh, so they said, uh, please pull up. They gave me my drink, and I pulled up. Ten minutes went by. Twelve minutes went by. In the 13th minute, I went inside. How many knows I didn't go to the drive-thru to go inside? Come on. But there's always one thing in the back of my mind. One of you may be in there. So even though I don't want to be, I'm forced to be. I said, uh, I've been waiting almost 15 minutes in line out there. Is there any Big Macs in my future? (laughs) Are there anything waiting with my name on it here? Uh, What did you have? Two Big Macs and a Diet Coke, which I already received, which is already finished. Uh, That's not even on our screen. Receipt? (laughs) We'll get right on that. It's amazing how quick they can make it when you go in. And how long it takes them to make it when you're standing in line. So that's just a few of my frustrations. So I didn't mean to stir your flesh back up. (laughs) That's just part of my frustration. So there's a few things that frustrates me. But at the same time, I know that we have to deal with the flesh, crucify it, and say, you're not my Lord, Jesus is, and say, I'm going to literally seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness or his way of being right And all the things that I need in my household will come to pass. Amen. Will come to pass. So for the sake of my children and grandchildren, my children old enough should know better. The jury's still out times. No, our children is old enough to know better. But for the sake of my grandchildren, for the sake of your kids and your grandkids, may we all live according to the word of God. And may they follow after our pattern because we do right. Amen. Because we learn to do right. Amen. The Bible says, when my judgments are in the earth, my people learn to do righteous. Learn to do right. So I I don't want to have to learn to do right when just because all hells broke loose. I want to learn to do right because it's right. You know, I don't want to find my place before God because there's no other way out. I want to walk with God every day. So when something does happen, I'm prepared for it. Amen. It's a bad time to load your gun when you need it. You should already have it, spiritually speaking. I know some people get twisted here. You should already have the ammo ready. Amen. You should already have it ready and be right. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you believe? Say, show me, teach me. Lead me. All the fathers, show me. Well, that was weak. How many fathers do we have here? Five? All right, let's try it again. All the fathers, show me. Teach me. Lead me. All the mothers, show me. Teach me. Lead me. All the young men, show me. Is anybody here besides Grant? And Levi, all right, all the young men say, show me, teach me, lead me. All the young ladies, show me, teach me. Come on, ladies, I know. I've never seen a, I've never seen a female yet that didn't, ha- well, let's try it again. 
All the young ladies, show me, teach me, lead me. Amen. Come on, let's stand together. Let's clap.